Caddis Maximus here. This time doing a review of the Fowler 2 to 6 inch dial cylinder bore gauge. I figured I'd do a few reviews of measuring instruments. I do so many other me mechanics tools. These would be some of the uh, measuring instruments that you would, uh, if you're more serious, especially about engine rebuilding and that kind of thing, or at least measuring uh, mains and rods and all that kind of stuff, that versus using, say, a internal micrometer or things like telescoping gauges, which do work well. The issue with things like telescoping gauges is that there's more t t a little bit more technique required with them because you got to use them properly in the bore, and then you got to mic the gauge properly. The nice thing about the fo Fowler is it's a gauge. It's an interchangeable anvil gauge, so you can set this gauge. Now, what a gauge is is something that compares against a known value. So, for instance, I have a little stainless steel coffee mug we'll use as an example. I'm setting the baseline of this at two and a half inches. And then this would help tell me plus or minus the sizing of this relative to two and a half inches. So instead of measuring, if we were saying uh, thousandths of an inch, uh, that would be 2,500 thousandths of an inch versus going plus or minus 25 thousandths of an inch. So it's a much more narrow range. You get a much more accurate reading once this is set up at a known value. And then once it's set up, unlike using a telescope gauge where you're having to do the whole procedure over again on every single <laughs> bore that you're trying to measure, you set the gauge up and then you use the gauge and you just go and measure your bores. And instead of just doing a few points because it's a hassle to use internal mics or using telescoping gauges, this and its convenience allows you to go ahead and do 10 measurements if you want. You can get a real, real granular with it. Um, and then you just do all the bores right next to each other and it's a 10 minute job. And you get, and you're real sure about your measurements. And so let me give you a nice close-up. There's definitely a lot of really good videos on how exactly to use these two rebuild engines. Uh, very long and detailed. There's one video that was an actual review of this, and he did a pretty good job. But I just wanted to do a, my own review, of course, and show a lot of the extra detail. And that's what I really like, is to show some of the quality. Now this thing's about, uh, it ranges two to $300. And how this works is you have these interchangeable anvils. They have a little head here that screws on a little cap and each of the anvils has a little shelf and so the cap traps it. You have these two little, they're, they don't roll so they're not wheels but they're guides to help keep the bore gauge in the middle of the cylinder and so these will retract to provide uh, a nice amount of tension and that's another nice aspect of it is it prevents it from wanting to be loose and then this little pin in the middle is actually what performs the measurement. And that act actuates on a little cam, which runs a push rod up to a test indicator. Now, this is in half thousandths of an inch, so this indicator is twice the resolution of a standard one, which would be single thousandths per tick mark. This one would be half thousandths per tick mark or single thousandths per long tick mark. Now, since you can obviously read in between the marks and whether it's low or to the high side, you can easily get this down to a uh, single ten thousandths of an inch if you're really good at keeping your eye square. And that's one thing about gauges is obviously we tilt it this way or if we tilt it this way, it looks like it's pretty far off the line. But if we get right at, straight on, we can see that it's actually to the left. And that's a big deal about reading gauges. And one of the nice things about digitals is there is no viewing angle issue on a digital other than being able to see the screen. Where this, depending if you're staring at it from the side, you won't see the same measurement. And that's always something that's easy to forget. Now, even though this is a quarter inch travel gauge, the little anvil and head mechanism only actually has 50 thousandths of travel. So one's revolution, even though this gauge is capable of five revolutions. And so you, it makes it a little bit more troublesome to set up because you only have 50 thousandths of range and you want to get it in the middle so it can tell you plus or minus. Um, for that reason, each one of these rods is 200 thousandths of an inch longer than the previous one. So you have all this granularity from two inches through four inches and uh, one fifth of an inch or 200 thousandths of an inch increments. And then what you have is up here we have some spacing washers precision. We have 120 thousandths, 80 thousandths, 40 thousandths, and 20 thousandths. 
uh, and I have the 120 already in here and those would just fit onto the back of the anvil to space the interchangeable anvil out a little further to get it to be in that sweet spot. So that's something you have to be aware of and to get the larger sizes they just have a two inch extension piece. Now one also nice thing about a gauge is you do want to keep these pretty clean but because it's a gauge and you're setting it up with a micrometer even if there is happens to be a little piece of grit and the anvil sticking out a little bit too far obviously on a mic if you have a piece of grit in there now you're measuring the piece of grit on top of whatever piece of metal that you're measuring where with this gauge even if there's a piece of grit you're actually using a micrometer or something else to actually zero it so you'll end up zeroing the piece of grit as well and still get an accurate measurement and that is another distinct advantage the little trick is you do need to have a micrometer you'll want to have some gauges such as this this is a plug gauge that i use uh, that's uh, less than one ten thousandth of an inch uh, inaccurate so it's known as an x class so this would be measured in uh, a hundred thousandths of an inch of accuracy and so you'd use that to make sure your micrometer is accurate and then you set your micrometer for what your base value is so you need to have a pretty good idea of what the size of the bore is but you could say use dial calipers to measure this I found that it's two and a half inches nominal roughly so I set this whole gauge up so it'll read about it's a little bit on the high side but it's zeroed off so when the needles already up here all the way up here at zero that would be exactly two and a half inches on a Verner 10 thousandths indicating micrometer and the deal to set these up is actually not so bad you just need to get the micrometer on the surface put the spring loaded anvil in first get the other anvil in and then you this is the the only tricky part here is it's got to be vertical that's where you have the space and then you just have to wobble it around until the needle gets to its highest point because then you know that you're absolutely at the center like right there once we've done that we now know that this is set exactly for two and a half inches and what makes this so magical is now we can just take this thing put it into the bar and just do some various measurements and we can just run it around you can actually slide it up it's kind of difficult to slide so you'd just rock it back and forth until you saw where the needle got to the high spot since we know it need to be compressed further we can see that this is actually a little wider than two and a half inches by and right at this point we can see 19 thousandths now if we get somewhere up close to the lip where it was swage because it's a vacuum sealed mug we can actually see that that lip is dramatically tighter than or excuse me yes it is dramatically tighter than the area down closer to the bottom of the cup and that's something to be expected excuse me that wouldn't be tighter it's a little bit looser because it's been swaged down and so that's how you would use this is you would just swing it around and you'd see exactly where the needle got the highest and that would be your measurement and then if you wanted to you just twist such as this cup you just twist it and do the same thing and you just kind of move it around to make sure you're in the center and in this particular spot what we see is almost see that's really close that's only ten thousandths of an inch or so there we go and so there take a little bit of technique all measuring does take technique but see I was able to do a quite a few measurements and I and it's easy to read because I'm working off of a zero that this is right here it is eleven thousandths oversized and so as I take these measurements I can see how this cup has now right at that point we now I'm able to see that the cup is actually not round if I'm measuring right here against the handle I can see that the cup versus the side it's larger so now I've just detected that there's an oval if I'm measuring perpendicular to the handle now I find out that it's almost two and a half inches it's under by four thousandths of an inch it's almost perfectly accurate but where the tabs where the handle were welded cause it to warp if I measure perpendicular to that I can see that it's 25 thousandths oversized so the difference there would be 20 thousandths of oval 
And so that's how these gauges really can save you a lot of time and effort because it's much easier to detect something like that. And you may have ovaling that only happens in one area because there's a material defect. And trying to use internal mics, telescoping gauges, uh, you, when you need to take uh, uh, several measurements, nothing beats one of these. Nothing beats one of these. I mean, I just took 20 or 30 measurements in the amount of time it would have taken me to do two or three using just about any other method. So I really wanted to uh, bring that to people's attention. There's a lot of, uh, obviously, mechanics and service people who watch my channel and just wanted to show how effective one of these gauges is, especially if you have to do any kind of repetitive measurements and you really don't want to mess around with uh, spending so much time counting Veroner scales and all this kind of stuff. You just want a good measurement and have good confidence that it's accurate and be able to take repeated measurements just to make sure you really got uh, a good baseline. So anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.